Salam, salam. Greetings, everyone, brothers and sisters in Mishiaka, Yache. Hope Ahaya is prospering you all. Hope that the hand of Ahaya is upon you and leading you in all righteousness and bringing you onto those fruits of the Spirit that we may enter into those gates bearing the name of Yache and bearing the Holy Spirit that we may all attain unto life. Mm. Give all glory to Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya. Amen. And Yache Mishiak, our King and our Adonah. And glory unto our Mother, the Ruaka Kwadoshi, that leadeth us unto all righteousness and bringeth us unto all remembrance of the things of Allah. Your brother Kosafo, in the faith and patience of Mishiak Yache. And I'm your brother Zakwa, coming to endure the tribulation. To gain a great reward with you. All right, today we're going to be going into an exhortation for it's a little more particular on the Gentile side, and it's also an exhortation for us because we're all one according to the Spirit in the house of Allahayam. So we start in here at First Corinthians twelve, verse twelve to fourteen, I think. Yeah. Uh. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also with Mashiach. So just as our hand is not our foot, yet our hand, feet, all work in accordance with us, to keep us on track. If we hurt our foot, we have to tend to it, right. and get it right, ice it. Put heat on it, nurture it. You just think your hand tends to your foot. Right, because you got to right. You got to use your hands to get it right. right. And any injury to the body hurts. Right. No matter where it's at, it hurts everything. Right. You you stub your toe, it still hurts. Right. Even though it's just the toe, and it actually it, it hinders the rest of the body. Right. Doing what it needs to do. Right. But you can't. You stub your toe, you can't move. Right. It hinder you from moving to do what you need to do. So. And it affects it too in the realm of physically, yes, and right. also sub mentally. Right. You you know you got a stub toe so you you can't operate really, differently. Right. right. So we see the body of Mishiaka, we all have to be in unity and all walking according to Mishiaka, who is the head, the chief cornerstone. We have to operate according to the head that we may right not hinder the work of the body so so is the body of Mishiaka continue please for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles mm -hmm. whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit so one baptism to partake in this one body is only one true doctrine we all have to bear the fruits of the Spirit in all righteousness, which is keeping the commandments, and by all faithfulness in the testimony of Yahweh, to be counted as believers, true believers, and being a part of the body of Yahweh Mishiaka. And it doesn't matter our occupation, whether we were bond or free, no matter what position we had in this earth, this is the calling for all. We all are His servants. Doesn't no matter where we're from, which which nation we come from in regards to this opportunity. For the body is not one member, but many. And if we look at Romans chapter seven, that's this is the opportunity in that spirit to get away from former deeds, the sin that's been working in us. The sin knows the commandments. Sin is well aware. Sin is a spirit. 
-hmm. brothers and sisters of all nations. It's an actual spirit that's very much aware of the commandments. It very much knows what the law says and is trying to hinder us from it. And Paul is, is, was exhorting us to come out from that, separate from it, and walk according to the spirit of life, and not according to the flesh. We don't look at things according to our lust, but according to the spirit that we may attain unto all spiritual things. So we can understand when we look at Romans chapter 7, verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Now notice, I speak to them that know the law. So he's shown, as Peter admonished us in Second Peter 3 and 15 and 16, we have to be learned to understand Paul's writings. All right. That's why he says, I speak to them that know the law. All right, continue. For I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man, so long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband, so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. Mm -hmm. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. So that she is no adulterer, though she be married to another man. Now, this is important. Being married to this other husband, what does it continue to say? Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Messiah. Yes. That ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto Elohim. Then we see what being married to this new husband does. It now causes us to bring forth fruit to the right way. That's right. The fruits of the spirit, as opposed to the fruits of death, the evil spirits and the lust of the flesh. Right. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Wow. Right. For when we were in the flesh, given over to our lust, the motions of sin, the sin, sin, that spirit was just operating in us, moving us wherever it wanted. Right. Because we were hearkening to it. We were under its dominion. Right. The spirit of disobedience. That's right. As uh, you touch that uh, Ephesians uh, 2 and, uh, I think it's 2 and 2 and 3. The three just chapter two verse two. Probably verse one too. Huh? Okay. Three just chapter two verse one. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, mm -hmm. the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. There we see. That was the spirit that was operating in us. Because all it does is lead to disobedience. Right. Touching back to um, uh, where we're at in Romans 7, mm -hmm. I'm going to touch something at verse 5, if mm -hmm. you don't mind. The, um, so he said, the motions of sin, which were by the law, that shows that sin actually knows the commandments. Because it has to know what it has to get you to do to die. Because right. uh, Psalms 94 and 20 says, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Mm -hmm. It was actually in Ahayah. Does Satan have fellowship with Allah Hayyam? No. What concord hath Mishiaka with Belier? Correct. So you can understand. We said in Psalms 94, 20, Shall a throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? Ahaya has literally molded what mischief looks like by the commandments. Because anything outside of the commandments is mischief. Right. That's exactly what Paul was going on about the law of his members. That went against the law of Allah. Mm. Right. In this very chapter right here. So we see that, that back at Romans 7 and 5, the motion of that sin which were by the law, that means it knew the commandments, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Mm. So in Mishiach Ayache, we can bring forth fruit unto life, That's right. which is fruits of the spirit, fruits of righteousness, keeping the law. Or we'll be given into our lust and we'll serve sin working in our members and all our fruits will be unto death. And those fruits that will lead us unto death 
Galatians 5.19, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Allah Because all these fruits are unto death. Now, Paul is just continuing to exhort us in Romans chapter 7, verse 6. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. And not in the oldness of the letter. And this helps us understand the letter of the law is animal sacrifice. Because the letter killeth. But the Spirit give it light, as First Corinthians 3 and 6 said. So there we see, but now we are delivered from the law. We understand it now because we're not going to be sinning anymore because we're walking by the Spirit of life. Right. Walking in all righteousness, serving Allah. And so no longer are we held, as he said, being dead when we were held. Because right. by our conscience still being guilty, right. it's holding it's us back. back. We didn't get that separation from it, right. letting it go. So we can see what Paul was talking about. That we should serve. Because now we're obedient to our new husband. Now we're obedient to Yahshua. We're his servants obeying everything he says to do now. And he told us to bear fruit. And he told us if we love him, keep his commandments. In John chapter 15 verse 14. He told us we are his friends if we do whatsoever he commanded us. So he says that we should serve in newness of spirit. Notice that spirit of sin is no longer our guide anymore. Now we have a new spirit. Ah, he has been gracious to, to give us the scriptures, preserve his word to teach us and admonish us and correct us and instruct us on how to war, the true warfare. And now it's interesting, the weapons of our warfare <laughs> is in carnal. Right. We war with a different warfare. The true weapon of Allah, as Paul attested in the book of Corinthians, he said in 2 Corinthians 10, he says, um, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Allah to the pulling down of strongholds. Mm. The weapons of our warfare is the fruits of the spirit. That's how we actually war against evil spirits, by right. working righteousness, mm -hmm. keeping the commandments. And that's what pulls down their strongholds because when you don't agree with them anymore, right. they lose their dominion. Mm. That where we were held, that stronghold is pulled down. Verse 5, casting down imaginations. This tells us that it's evil spirits talking to us. That's what's given us the imagination to sin. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Allah Hayyam. Because the evil spirits, all they seek to do is go against Ahaya's will. That's right. So you can see he's talking about how we war against these evil spirits. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Allah Hayyam and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Mishiach. Yeah. Everything they tell us, Ahaya casts it down by the law, by the fruits of the spirit. Because Yache fought the devil with the same weapons in Matthew chapter 4, 4 verse 1 to 4. Everything the devil tempted him with, he responded with the scriptures of Allah, his wisdom. This is our warfare. So we understand this warfare. I want to touch on exactly what you're touching on. Ah, yeah, be gracious. This is uh, the Acts of Peter, 
and I'm going to do a quick synopsis of where I'm going so that you can understand what's happening. This is Simon, the same one from Acts chapter 8. He was in Samaria and he bewitched the people. And he was trying to buy the Holy Spirit because he seen that Peter was laying hands on people and they were receiving the Holy Spirit. And Simon wanted that gift. He wanted to be able to lay hands on people and to give them the Holy Spirit. And he tried to buy it. And Peter was like, we cannot be won over by money. Now, it's interesting. The same Simon, when you look into the, the act of Peter, the same Simon who bewitched Samaria, the same Simon who bewitched Rome. He went to Rome after. Mm. All right. And during the time, the Romans had Peter and Simon in the Colosseum. And they were trying to show who was serving the true living Elohim. Was it Simon who actually was serving the devil? And doing magic and sorcery? Or was it Peter who was calling upon the Donia to do all these miraculous deeds and miraculous works? Now, long story short, I'm going to skip through it. Now, what happened was is that Simon, it was time for Simon to do a miraculous work. And he made the people say, if he makes this man rise from the dead, then you have to cast Peter out of the, out of the city at once. And the people said, we won't only just cast Peter out, we'll also burn him with fire. So Simon goes and he does his magic to raise the man up from the dead. I'm in chapter 28 of the, the Acts of Peter. And he goes and he does his magic to, to raise the man up from the dead, makes him bow three times and you know does some little bitty stuff. But the guy actually doesn't raise from the dead, but it tricks the Romans. So the Romans are getting the wood ready because they're ready to burn Peter. And this is what Peter says. It says, And immediately they began to gather wood to burn Peter. But Peter, having received the power of Messiaca, lifted up his voice and said to those who were shouting against him, Now I see, Romans, that I must not call you foolish and silly, so long as your eyes and your ears and your senses are blinded. Because Simon had done witchcraft, he had bewitched the people. So long as your mind is darkened, you do not perceive that you are being bewitched. Since you seemingly believe that a dead man rose who has not risen, I would have been content, Romans, to keep silent and to die in silence and to leave you among the illusions of this world. But the punishment of the unquenchable fire is before my eyes. So you see how Simon was mistreating him, ready to get this man killed. But we're going to see how Peter operates toward him. Uh, if you agree, let the dead man speak. Let him rise. If he is alive, let him untie the band from his chin. Let him call his mother and say to you, Brawlers, why are you crying? Let him beckon to you with his hand. If now you will see that he is dead and yourselves bewitched, let this man depart from the beer. Who hath persuaded you to depart from Christ? And ye shall see that the dead man is such as ye saw him brought hither. But Agrippa the perfect had no longer patience, but thrust away Simon with his own hands. And again the dead man lay as he was before. And the people were enraged, and turned away from the sorcery of Simon, and began to cry out, Hearken, O Caesar! If now the dead riseth not, let Simon burn instead of Peter. For verily he hath blinded us. But Peter stretched forth his hand and said, O men of Rome, have patience. I say not unto you that if the lad be raised, Simon shall burn. But if I say it, ye will do it. And the people cried out, Against thy will, Peter, will we do it. Unto whom Peter said, If ye continue in this mind, the lad shall not arise. For we know not to render evil for evil. But we have learned to love our enemies and pray for our persecutors. For if even this man can repent, it were better. For Allah will not remember evil. Let him come, therefore, into the light of Christ. But if he cannot, let him possess the part of his father the devil. But let not your hands be defiled. And that's when you don't take matters into your own hand. That's right. Vengeance belonging to Ahayan. That's right. It's amazing.
Yeah, he will be magnified as a good example of how operating in the fruits of the Spirit overcomes the works of the devil. By speaking to the people sincerely and not having any evil thoughts in his heart, told them what was what, showed them that the devil was trying to deceive them. That's right. And in the end of that story, he converted those people. Yeah, he converted the people. Unfortunately, not Simon, but it wasn't for him. So I don't have any gracious. I have knows. There we see, brothers and sisters, this warfare, we fight with the works of the Holy Spirit, the right. fruits of the Spirit, not with the works of the flesh. So, going back to Romans, now we're in Romans 6 and 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Meshiachah was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We come up out of that water walking in newness of light. Mm -hmm. And then we also, from that point on, we're focused on being washed within our hearts by the washing of the word that we may attain unto the being blameless and having our garments clean and keeping our, our bodies undefiled that the Holy Spirit may be pleased to dwell in us and we return it as it has been given to us, pure and holy. That's right. Walking in newness of light, jumping in uh, verse 11. Of Romans 6 please likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto Elohim through Yache Hemeshiach our Adonai and these verses are just for confirmation so we can understand this is the journey that we're on verse 22 but now being made free from sin and become servants to Elohim you have your fruit unto holiness mm. and the end everlasting life. Yeah, so we bear in the fruits of the Spirit. So right. Those fruits of the Spirit is what going to lead us to holiness. Peter 1, like about verse 5 to 8, talks about how we add to our faith virtue and add to our virtue, temperance and patience. And I think it's uh, holiness, brotherly kindness, right. and charity. Paul was exhorting us as well, the same as Peter, to build in the fruits of the Spirit. That we may attain unto the holiness of Allah, yes. bearing all the Holy Spirit. But there we see this is our, our goal, brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, if you can read, because we are Hebrew readers, we got to read the records. That's right. Second Peter 1 and 5. Second Peter 1 verse 5. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Now, diligence means you're attentive to everything. And you're already in the faith, so you're adding to your faith virtue, which virtue is high moral character. You're learning the commandments and you're learning to be of the, the most integrity. Mm -hmm. So you keep away from sinning. And then what do you add to virtue? And to virtue, knowledge. The knowledge is how to apply it. All right. Now you have that mo high moral character, now you're applying it in everything that you're doing. Because now you're becoming mature, as Hebrews 5 and 14 says, he that is mature is him that is exercised in the right. word and able to discern good and evil. That's right. Now you're working the works of righteousness. You understand the word and you understand the battle that's going on in this world. You understand these evil spirits are trying to deter you. And you're focused, making sure you're applying every virtue that you learned in your diligence of searching the scriptures, learning the law, and searching yourself and learning where the devil is trying to deter you and being focused and making sure you're attaining unto Yahshua and not being found a reprobate. Hmm. And to knowledge, temperance. And as you're learning the knowledge, you're applying the law, the devil's coming at you. Right. So you have to be temperate. Right. Can't, cannot lose self-control. Have to be moderate in all things. And being sure not to be given into anything because he's trying to deter you any way he can. Right. And in your temperance, as you're learning to do this, what are you going to learn? Patience. And being temperate, you're going to learn patience because you're going to see the fruits of temperance. That's the right. fruits of sitting there and not reacting to the works of the devil. Right. Not giving in to his temptations. In your patience, you're going to see Ahaya delivering you. That's right. Because for, with every temptation, he maketh a way for, yes, for, for, a man, for, he maketh for a man a way out. Yes, he does. He just has to wait long enough. Right. Corinthians 10 and 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But Allah is faithful, 
who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, with the temptation, make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Mm-hmm. And we know now the weapons of our warfare are the fruits. Right. So the way out is always the fruits of the Spirit. Paying attention, being temperate, being patient, and looking. Paying attention for the, when he makes the way out of whatever situation the devil is tempting you with. And praying, as Peter exhorted. Yes, Peter and Paul exhorted. Right? Yeah. right? Uh, and, and patience, holiness. And because through that patience, you're going to learn that Ahaya is your deliverer. That's right. And he has all things in his hand. And you're going to get to the point where you're going to just, just trust in him. Because right. you've experienced it. You've experienced how he works. And this is where you're attaining unto holiness. Because you're seeing the fruits of the Spirit that's bringing you unto that holiness. That's right. Seeing how they work. And in him, Paul exhorted on the same thing because said, Now we have peace. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Romans 5 and 1, he said, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with Allah Hayyam through our Adonai Yachim Mashiach, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of Allah Hayyam. Because we're trusting that we'll be able to partake in the resurrection. Not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. This is that trial period, learning the patience, mm. knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So we can understand being tempered in all things, we're developing patience through the experiences of tribulation. And verse 4 says, and patience, experience. Because through patience, we learn the experience, we get experience with dealing with the temptations of the enemy, and we get experience of learning what is pleasing unto Ahaya Alahayim. And experience hope. And that hope maketh us not ashamed. Because the love of Allah is shed abroad in our hearts. Yes. So we see they're both teaching the same thing. Touching back to the Second Peter 1 verse 7. Right. So now, now we attain unto holiness. And then you have brotherly kindness. And holiness to brotherly kindness. Now we are so grounded in Allah We know we know the law. We're working the fruits of the Spirit. We start building because we all, always have to grow, right. focusing on brotherly kindness and love amongst brethren. Because we have to be at peace with all men. Because we have to work our righteousness. But they have to see the light of Allah Hayyam in us. That they may glorify Allah Hayyam and hopefully repent. And if not repent, they'll still have to glorify Allah Hayyam in the end that judgment, knowing that righteousness was shown unto them. Right. After brotherly kindness, what are we trying to attain unto and learn in brotherly kindness? Charity. Brotherly kindness leads us unto charity, which Colossians chapter 3 verse 14 says is the bond of perfectness. Right. And charity is love. And 1 John 4 and 8 says, what does 1 John 4 and 8 said? He says that Allah is love. That's the goal to attain unto him. So we can understand the whole goal is to become like Allah Hayyam. 1 John 4 and 8, he that loveth not, if we don't attain unto this, right. if we don't attain unto bearing all the fruits of these spirits, that means he that loveth not, n- knoweth not Allah Hayyam. For Allah Hayyam is love. We can understand, we don't attain unto this, we won't make it. Right. We have to attain unto this, brothers and sisters. Because in Matthew 7 and 20 to about 24, Yahweh said, He'll tell us, Depart from me, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. He's going to say, I never knew you. That's right. Because if we don't love, we know it not, Allah I am. So may we be encouraged, brothers and sisters, to be exhorted to attain unto this love, knowing that we have the opportunity to partake in the blessings of Abraham by faith in this Yahweh for all nations to walk in this love. I want everybody to understand that uh, our brother Kafafo just went into an in-depth understanding of the two greatest commandments. (laughs) 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 So that everybody can understand where he just went. Because the first greatest commandment is to love Elohim with all your heart, all your might, and all your soul. So of course you're going to keep all the commandments. You're going to have the virtue. You're going to have holiness. You're going to have knowledge. You're going to operate in temperance. You're going to operate in patience. And then the second greatest commandment is 
to love thy brother as thyself. So now you gain the brotherly kindness and you gain the charity. So it was a lot. That was a lot that was just uh, I had just edified us on there because that is right love right. Cause that that's everything right there in itself. Right. You love Ahaya, you're gonna keep his commandments. If you love Ahaya, you're gonna bear the fruit to the spirit. If you love like, everything everything it's all in there. It's right. all one doctrine. Cause it says in John first John five and three. Um uh, verse two and three it says, By this we know that we love the children of Allah Hayam when we love Allah Hayam and keep his commandments. Right. It's all in. For this is the love of Allah Hayyam, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Right. That still pertains to the first commandment, the, the great commandment, the first and great. And then it goes on to say in chapter 1 John 4 and um, 15, it says, Whosoever shall confess that Yache is the son of Allah Hayyam, Allah Hayyam dwelleth in him, and he in Allah Hayyam. Mm -hmm. And we have known and believed the love that Allah Hayyam hath to us. Allah Hayyam is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in Allah Hayyam. So if we dwell in all the commandments and the fruits, right. we dwell in Allah Hayyam. That's right. And Allah Hayyam in him, herein is our love made perfect. Because love is the bond of perfectness. perfectness. So it shows John, Peter, Paul, James, they all on the same page. page. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. That's right. We become Alahayams by Yachim Shiaka in us. Wow. Paul was just more educated. Yeah. <laughs> oh, his words were deep. Again, brothers and sisters, Peter warned us about Paul. Right. He is hard to be understood by them, by those that are unlearned and unstable. Right. But everybody else loved him because like, man, I is giving him right. much wisdom. Right. He goes on to say, there is no fear in love because we won't have to be afraid of the devil because we're not working his works. Death has no dominion over us. He can't kill us. That's right. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because when we attain unto perfection, full love, charity, bearing all the fruits of the Spirit, keeping all the commandments, it has no power. We have confidence in Allah. You're right. The boldness that we'll have in the right. day of judgment. That's right. Because there's no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. If we still have sin, the guilt is going to be there, and we know we're going to die. Mm. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Mm. So if you know you still have things you need to get right, you haven't attained on that to the perfection yet. Right. And knowing that we're running a race, be constant, be quick to act. So it's counting all diligence. Diligence is hasty. Yes. Do things quickly, do, do righteousness quickly, not iniquity. Right. Right. Ah, yeah, be magnified, man. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love Allah I am, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. That's right. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love Allah I am whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth Allah Hayyam, love his brother also. Mm. Sitting there right there in the great commandment. And while our brother is going to you know, more I'm edification. To to, I'm going to take it to the next level so they can understand. You know, Allah Hayyam be gracious unto me. Allah Hayyam deliver us. To love your neighbor as yourself is the rest of the law. So Yache said in Matthew 22, verse 40, On these two mm. commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Mm. Hang it like you hang clothes on a hanger. Everything <laughs> is hanging on these two commandments. The law, the testimony, and the fruits of the Spirit all hang on these two commandments. Mm. Yache is our teacher. Yes, he is. This is the understanding, brothers and sisters. And I'm... Um, 
Are you finished? I'm going to go into the apocalypse of Paul so that one can understand why you have to bear these fruits of the spirit and why you have to rid all the works of the flesh before you die. Right. You have to become perfect before you die. Now, I'm going to jump into it and I'm going to touch on the weighty parts. And Paul is seeing what happens when you die. It's going to be a parallel. I'm going to go to the just man, then I'm going to go to the man who has sin, who was impious. It says, I saw the just man advance and find refreshments and confidence. And before he went out of the world, so right when he was dying, the holy and impious angels both attended. So you have the holy angels and then you have the wicked angels both sitting there waiting as soon as he dies. Chapter 13. And I saw them all, but the impious found no place of habitation in him. But the holy angels took possession of his soul. So when you're dying... You have the impious, you have the holy angels, they're both waiting to see who has place in this man. And we're going to see the example of what happens when the wicked angels find place in you. But this man is the just man, and, and the wicked angels had no place in him. There was no work to the flesh in him, only the works of the fruits of the spirit. So the righteous angels took hold of him. They took possession of his soul, guiding it till it went out of the body. And they roused the soul, saying, Soul, know the body you live, for it is necessary that you should return to the same body on the day of resurrection. Just like our brother was exhorting, you have to return your body the same way, because that same body you're going to use in the resurrection. So that's why you want to take care of it. That you may receive the things promised to all the just, receiving therefore the soul from the body they immediately kissed as if it were familiar to them. The spirit is familiar to them. The Holy Spirits are familiar to the angels because this is what they're operating in. Mm, they all have the testimony of Yahweh. Right. As, uh, that's Revelation <laughs> 19 and 10. The angels have the testimony of Yahweh too. Right. So mm -hmm. they, they were familiar with his spirit. They greeted each other with the holy kiss. They did. Just like, wow. Saying to it, be of good courage, for you have done the will of Allah while placed on the earth. That's why James said faith without works are dead. That's right. Because you have to do it. James 2 and 26. Mm -hmm. And there came to meet it the angel who watched it every day and said to it, this is your guardian angel. Be of good courage, soul. I rejoice in you because you have done the will of Allah on earth. For I related to Allah all your works just as they were. Similarly, also the spirit proceeded to meet it and said, Soul, fear not, nor be disturbed until you come to the place which you have never known. But I will be a helper to you, for I found in you a place of refreshment in the time when I dwelt in you, while I was on the earth. And the spirit strengthened it, and the angel received it. Now this is the spirit of life. This is the spirit that was breathed into you that made you a living soul. The same spirit that was breathed into you is going to attest against you if you have done wrong or if you have done well. The angel, your guardian angel, is going to test against you or a test for you. And also, the spirit that will breathe in you is going to test against you or for you in the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. The spirit strengthened it and the angel received it and led it into heaven. And the angel said, Where are you running to, O soul? Do you dare to enter heaven? Now, now, this is interesting because this is in the firmament. This is where the angels are striving. Before that soul could go into the heavens to stand before Elohim, he had to go through the firmament where the angels strive, where all the wicked angels are. Mm. And they said, oh, soul, do you dare to enter heaven? Because he's right in the firmament right before you go to heaven. Wait and let us see if there's anything of ours in you. And behold, we find nothing in you. Mm. None of those wicked spirits or angels found any of their works in him. They didn't find their traits or attributes in that soul. So there was nothing that they could do to it. Wow. Showing that we have to be purged. Right. Because they're yeah. going to do the same evil spirits that tried us all our life are going to be trying when we die to see. They're going to testify against us. Right. I definitely encourage you to read the Apocalypse of Paul because it's a great read. I'm in chapter 14, and I'm jumping over so that you can see the evil man and what happened to him. Okay. 
And he said to me, look again down on the earth and watch the soul of the impious man going out of the body, which grieved Ahaya day and night, saying, I know nothing else in this world. I eat and drink and enjoy what is in the world. Well, I don't know anything else. All I know is what's before me. Mm, that's the YOLO life. You right. only live once. You only live once. Do whatever. Because you only live today, you don't know what comes tomorrow. Mm. Right? But who is there who had descended into hell and ascended? So it's cursing Yache. Right. Has declared to us that there is judgment there. And again, I looked carefully and I saw all the scorn of the sinner and all that he did. And they stood together before him in the hour of need. So as soon as he was about to die, you got the angel of righteousness and the angels of wickedness standing there waiting the same. And it was done to him in that hour when he was led out of the body at the judgment. And he said, it was better for me if I had not been born. Because everything flashed before his eyes like you read in, in Second Edges, the 70 tells, and verses. Right. So everything flashed before his eyes, and he said, it had been better for me if I had not been born. Mm. And after these things, there came at the same time the holy angels and the evil angels. And the soul of the sinner saw both, and the holy angels did not find a place in it. Moreover, the evil angels cursed it. So the holy angels, he wasn't bearing none of the fruits of the spirit. Neither was he keeping the commandments. The angels didn't find any place. He didn't even believe in Yache. Yeah, a tough case. And after these things, there came at the same time the holy angels and evil angels. And the soul of the sinner and the holy angels did not find a place in it. Moreover, the evil angels cursed it. When they had drawn it out of the body, the angels admonished it a third time, saying, O wretched soul, look upon your flesh from whence you come out, for it is necessary that you should return to your flesh in the day of resurrection that you may receive what it do for your sins and your impieties. Mm. And when they had led it forth, the guardian angel preceded it and said to it, O wretched soul, I am the angel belonging to you, relating daily to Ahaya your evil works, whatever you did by night or day. And if it were in my power, not for one day would I minister to you, but none of these things was I able to do. The judge is full of pity and just, and he himself commanded us that we should not cease to minister to the soul till you should repent, but you have lost the time of repentance. Now this is amazing, because y'all always hear us talk about the angel of righteousness and the angel of iniquity, not understanding that it's your guardian angel who's the angel of righteousness constantly ministering unto you to try to turn you from wickedness. And trying to turn you away from dead works. This angel literally is ministering to you. And the Most High is so gracious and full of pity and mercy. That he makes this angel stay with you and continue to minister unto you. In hopes that you will repent. Mm. In hope that you will turn from it. And that you will actually hearken unto the angel of righteousness. Amazing. Worse than that's what Peter was attesting to, not accounting that the long suffering of Allah Hayyam leadeth you unto repentance. That's right. It's amazing. But unfortunately, it says, I have become a stranger to you, and you to me, because you never hearken unto him. Let us go on then to the just judge. I will not dismiss you before I know from today I am to be a stranger to you. So the angel had to fulfill his work. And the spirit afflicted it, and the angel troubled it. And when they had arrived at the powers, now this is this is the firmament, because they just arrived to the powers. This is the firmament. Go through all that before you even get to the firmament. Right. That's amazing. Right. And when they had arrived at the powers, when it started to enter into heaven, a burden was imposed upon it. Wow. Above all other burdens. Now, these evil angels that are fighting in the firmament, according to Ascension Isaiah, we have to go into that one day. <laughs> but the Ascension Isaiah talks about how the angels, what, what goes on in the seven heavens and the firmament. Now, the angels, the wicked angels are fighting in the firmament, but because they all want power. They're full of lust. They're full of all the works of the flesh. So they're all fighting for, for power. 
And they said, and when they had arrived at the powers, when it started to enter heaven, a burden was imposed upon it above all other burdens, error and oblivion and murmuring mm-hmm. met it. The spirits that it was operating right. in met it. And the spirit of fornication. Mm. So these four spirits and the rest of the powers, so and more, it wasn't just those four. Mm. It was error, oblivion, and murmuring. You know what oblivion means? I pulled it up before. So, so they can understand what oblivion means. It, it was very interesting. Oblivion, the state of being unaware or unconscious of what is happening. Right. So that's literally the spirit of the devil keeping you in darkness of what's actually going on in the world. Ignorance. Where you think that's, brother, this is right. amazing. They've made us to think that being ignorant is going to justify us. Right. But ignorance is actually a spirit right. that's trying to destroy us. Because whether you knew it or not, you're still guilty. Right. Romans chapter 2, 13, right. and be 14, yeah, 12 to 14 said, Yeah, them that you, are of the law shall be judged yeah. by the law, and them that are of no law shall be judged. The, yeah, them that are without law shall perish without law. Right, they shall perish Those that law. are in the law shall be judged by the law. That's right. Wow. And the Second Corinthians four verse three to six shows is the devil that's blinding, that's putting people, that's putting people in darkness so that they don't see Mashiach. Right. And those heavy burdens that were laid on him, Yache said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, "Come unto you that are uh, that are uh, heavy laden." Right. So he was trying to deliver us before we died. Right. And we'll see what happens when we don't. He says, "Error and oblivion and murmuring met it in the spirit of fornication." and the rest of the powers and said to it where are you going wretched soul and do you dare to rush into heaven oh man oh that we may see if we have our qualities in you since we do not see that you have a holy helper because the holy helper was was leading the holy helper and the spirit was literally leading the righteous soul into heaven he literally had an escort but this wicked soul the, the Holy Spirit and the guardian angel went before it to plead their cause. Mm. So they literally left the spirit to go up by itself. He had no escort. Mm. Hold that we may see if we have our qualities in you, since we do not see that you have a holy helper. And after that, I heard the voices in the height of heaven saying, Present that wretched soul to Elohim. So that we may know that it's Allah whom it despised. So everything you're doing, it's, you're only despising Allah Because he's the one who made you. When therefore it had entered heaven, all the angels saw it. A thousand thousand exclaimed with one voice, all saying, Woe to you, wretched soul, for the sake of your works which you did on the earth. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hope I really hope brothers and sisters are listening. Man. Right. I really hope they're listening. It's important. All these records are testifying against us. Everything we do on this earth is going to come with a reward. Yes, indeed. And goes on to say, What answer are you about to give to Allah when you have approached to adore him? What answer can you give to him? There's nothing you can say. And say they made me do it. Right. That person made me upset. I was working on it. I didn't look into it. I didn't have the time. I was working. The angel who was with it answered and said, Weep with me, my beloved. This angel is talking to the other angels. For I have not found rest in this soul. And the angel answered him and said, Let such a soul be taken away from our midst. For from the time it entered, the stink of it crosses to us angels. And after these things it was presented 
that it might worship in the sight of Elohim, and the angel of Elohim showed it Elohim who made it after his own image and likeness. Moreover, its angel ran before it, saying, Ahaya Elohim Alashodaye, I am the angel of this soul, whose works I presented to you day and night, not acting in accordance with your judgment. And the spirit likewise said, I am the spirit who dwelt in it from the time it was made. In itself I know it, and it has not followed my will. Judge it, Ahaya, according to thy judgment. And there came the voice of Elohim to it and said, Where is your fruit from which you are made worthy of the goods which you have received? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's the first thing the judge asked. Where is your fruit? Ooh. Where are the fruits of the Spirit? For the good things that you receive, you have to bring forth that fruit. The first thing he asked. Right. First thing he asked. Brothers and sisters, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're about to testify against them, too. You're about to straight testify against them. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing you can say. He says, Where's your fruit which you have made worthy of the goods which you have received? Have I put a distance of one day between you and a just person? Mm. Did I not make the sun to arise upon you as upon the just? Mm. But the soul was silent, having nothing to answer. So, so we all had the opportunity. Everybody had the same opportunity. Every day you had, you had a chance to change. That I made the sun shine upon you, as so it's just. You had a chance to change just like he did. The judgment of Elohim is perfect. That's exactly what the angels are going to say. And right after that, he's going to give you over to the angel of punishment. That quickly. Most of this world ain't worth it, man. No, it's not. It's not worth it, brothers and sisters. Nothing in this world worth more than what Allah has in store for them that love him. Ah, yeah, be magnified. This is all we have, brothers and sisters. Yache is all we have. Only way we're going to attain unto life. Well, it said this was an exhortation. I'm exhorted. Yeah. Encouraged. If you encourage in Elohim, encourage in Yache to attain unto this life, this opportunity to live. We hope through this exhortation, it's helped you understand the, the dichotomy, the two-sided war, life and death. Anything else? Definitely, definitely be encouraged, brothers and sisters. We have to obtain righteousness. We have to obtain and be holy as our Father in heaven is holy. And as Yahche has exhorted us to be holy, to be set apart. We we strongly encourage you, brothers and sisters, to, to grab a hold of Yahche. To grab a hold and to establish your feet upon that rock. The rock of our salvation. We, we invite you all. The email is still open. The website, you can go link upon the website. We encourage y'all to congregate with us and watch the videos and interact with us. And even to the point of Ahaya pushes you and Ahaya is calling you to come be a part of the congregation and to come join us and send us an email. We will receive you with open arms. Being the children of Allah in spirit and truth. This is a call for Jew and Gentile to do the work and to take your hand upon the plow and to not look backwards. The glory in Allah for you. 
and the angels shall rejoice and we shall rejoice, gaining a brother or sister. Mm -hmm. But Allah be magnified and, and let his spirit be poured out upon all upon the face of the earth. We glory in him. We glory in Ahaya. We glory in Yache Hemeshiaba. We glory in Ruaka Hakwadoshi. They are the Alahayim of Alahayims, the royal and holy family. Amen. Let you be encouraged. Let you be encouraged to do what's right and to depart from evil and iniquity and to come serve Alahayim in truth and spirit with us. All glory unto the Father. And we bless you in the name of Ahayah, those who are striving for the righteousness of Yahche. And striving to bear the fruits of the Spirit. All glory unto him forever. Amen. Thank you. Shalom. Peace be unto you all. Shalom. HRC, 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 HRC,